and welcome to my next watercolor demonstration. For this demonstration, I am going to paint a photograph that I took several years ago. This photograph is exactly as I wanted it, so I didn't really have to do any compositional studies for it. I drew it on my paper and got straight to work. This is on 300 pound arches paper and it is 22 by 15. I am starting by looking at the lightest colors that I see in the photograph. And there are quite a few light areas, so I've chosen to do the Ver Venetian marble. Um, it might actually be called Verona pink marble. And I'm starting in this area painting on dry paper with paint that is fairly uh, milky consistency. It's buff titanium with just a touch of alizarin crimson in there. This whole painting, I will be painting it on dry paper. There are no wet into wet areas. While I wait for the arch to dry, I am just going to jump right into those windows. The windows are part of what really attracted me to this image. They are reflecting a summer blue sky. For this blue, I am using a cobalt teal with just a touch of phthalo blue green shade. In this area is where there are little uh, peaks of blue sky that are showing through the wrought iron work. And even though the wrought iron is dark black, I could paint this whole area all blue. But I find that I lose my shapes when I do that and then try to come in on top and do the black uh, detailing. So I'm just starting off with painting the shapes as I see them. This whole painting is a series of abstract shapes, whether it's the shapes that are reflected through the wrought iron work of the sky or later in the shutters. I really enjoy it. It's a little bit of a meditation to just get lost in individual shapes and watch it come together. For most of this painting, I am painting with pretty good uh, color pigment already in my first wash. I don't anticipate going back in and doing several washes. I think I can get the color and the value that I want on the first go round. I don't hold myself to that if halfway through the painting or even towards the end of the painting, I realize things need to be darkened up. That's okay. But my point right now is to just try to get the colors down at exactly the pigmentation that I want them to be so that I don't have to come back in. At this point, the two window panes appear to be a different value of blue, but I know that one side is dry and the side I just painted, which is at the bottom, looks darker, but it will dry a little bit lighter as well. I'm putting in the last final pieces of blue sky that show through and then I flip the painting over. The buff titanium alizarin crimson archway is dry so now I can start painting the other colors next to it. For this area I'm using that cobalt teal again. I really like it the way it granulates. And a lot of this green in here is pretty textured. It looks like it is oxidized metal. 
so that cobalt teal works really well for it. I also add just a little bit of green in their green appetite, which is another granulating color. Rather than mixing a big puddle of my two greens together for this area, I just have two puddles of paint side by side. At times I dip my brush into one puddle and at times into the other. I want there to be differences in the green I'm laying down. I don't want it to just look like it's a solid piece of colored cardboard. Now I flip it over and I start working on the shutters. The shutters have some interesting color changes happening because of the light, so I am planning on doing this part in layers. I start off with a light green gold with, again, just a touch of cobalt teal mixed in and I paint the entire shutter. should always feel free to keep moving that painting around to best fit the way your wrist and hand like to paint. Here I touch a little bit more of the same blue that I have in the windows into the shutter. And that is still cobalt teal, but now I've added just a little bit of phthalo blue into it. And while my yellowy green mix is still wet, I can just blend softly my darker blue mix. The color change is really subtle and soft, so I want to get in there while things are still damp. I start to paint some of the details of the shutter with the same blue color. And again, I'm still painting at milk consistency, and the paper is always dry. Here I add some paint, and then I just get in there with a damp brush to soften it. I want to give some variation to the color of these uh, shutters. Now that the shutters are done, I decide to start in on some of the wall behind it. The wall is a very typical color of Venice, and I don't recall if I took this photo in Venice or Verona, but it's a color I see often in that area. For my version of it, I'm using transparent pyrrole orange with a little bit of burnt sienna in it. The burnt sienna adds a little bit of granulation, which I like. I just did that bottom part of the orange wall, which is beneath an electric wire that runs across the picture. It gave me a nice convenient stopping point for that, and I'm letting it dry. While it's drying, I've decided to come up and start getting in some of the darks of the wrought iron. These are the little shadow shapes behind the wrought iron, and they will really make that green of the iron pop out. Although these shapes are very dark, I never use just black in my dark areas. And even indigo I find to be a little bit flat and cold. Here I'm using indigo with a little bit of French ultramarine added into it. And just like I did the blue sky shapes on the bottom part of this, I'm just painting almost this lace work of shapes. I'm not particularly concerned what they're supposed to look like at the end. I have a strong drawing and I just trust that my drawing will get me there. So I'm really just painting these dark shapes without too much concern about the overall design. The nice thing about doing a strong drawing at the front end of the project is that you really don't have to worry about the composition or the elements as you paint, you have a lot of things you're already thinking about. For example, you're thinking about the right color, the right value, the right consistency of paint. So starting off with a strong drawing is one of the best pieces of advice I would give you. I used to want to get to the painting part so quickly that I thought I would kind of figure out the drawing as I was painting. 
it was typically pretty disastrous. I find it kind of magical when I just keep painting shapes and thinking in more abstract terms and then I start to see a design emerge. It's really strangely satisfying like in this little portion of the grating below the archway with that iron work. At this point the painting feels a little bit like a hot mess with these colors that don't seem to have a lot of harmony with each other. But I know the photograph I'm working from and I know the layers I'm going to build on so I'm not worried about it at all. It's good to come to a point where you trust the process but I think the only way to get there is to do a lot of paintings to make a lot of mistakes and then to come out of them on the other side having figured out how to fix them is one way but also just producing a lot of art it helps you understand that paintings typically will go through an ugly duckling stage but if you have a clear vision from the start and you've done your studies and your color compositions just stick to the plan often in the middle of a painting the painting will want to take me in a new direction and I'm okay with that. Having done my studies and having an idea of where I want to go, I feel pretty confident. So even if the painting starts to go in a different direction, it doesn't worry me. Here I'm just starting to add more of the details that I see. I'm paying attention to edges. Are they hard edges, like those black shadow shapes between the iron? or are they soft edges? Watercolor lends itself really beautifully to doing soft edges. I'm starting to put in the brown woodwork that is around the window frame. My brown again is burnt sienna with just a touch of phthalo blue. Even though the colors don't seem to have a lot of harmony at this point, they are all relating to each other. I'm using the same colors over and over again. I'm paying attention to the values in the brown parts of this painting. Where the wood frame is right underneath the top of the window is much darker than towards the bottom. Again, I'm still using just the same two colors, Burnt Santa with a little bit of Thalo Blue, but I'm adding more of the Thalo Blue to the parts that I want darker. Now it's time to get the rest of the wall painted in. Painting a big area like this can be tricky. You end up having two leading edges. 
And what I mean by that is that area I'm painting right now is one leading edge and the area I'm painting at this point is another leading edge. And you want to be aware that neither one of those edges is drying before you can get to them. Especially in something like a wall, I don't want some odd dry marks. So you'll see me going back and forth between the two edges. This again is mostly transparent pyrrole orange. And I am putting a touch of burnt sienna in the parts of the wall that have a little bit of a darker shadow. Again, I'm painting on dry paper. I could wet that background to keep the edge uh, from drying on me on those two different leading edges. But if I do that, I would have to paint with some pretty thick paint or I would have to come in and do a second and third layer. And I'm trying to get this nailed in in one layer. I'm painting at a whole milk consistency, so there's quite a bit of pigment in my puddles. And it's laying down nicely. At this point, it might look like this part of the wall is a very different color than the bottom part of the wall. But you'll see that when it dries, they're the same. It's a good example of how much paint lightens up as it dries. I'm sorry that that bottom portion of the painting is off the video screen as I get that done. But I'm just keeping an eye on it and painting that edge as well as this edge back and forth until they can meet. The nice thing about doing these Italian walls is the paint is not evenly put on there. There are areas of the wall that are a little bit more faded or have texture or watermarks. And it adds to this beautiful sense of wear. I'm working pretty quickly here and I have my two puddles of color, one transparent pyrrol orange and the other puddle burnt sienna. Every once in a while I dip into one and then the other just to keep things looking a little bit different as I move along. It helps capture the difference in texture in the wall and the difference in how the light hits it and watermarks. Be sure not to just paint these big areas from one consistent puddle. It makes it boring, but also it, it doesn't look natural. Most things that we look at have a difference in color. Now I'm going in and I'm painting a second layer on that bottom swatch that I painted earlier. This area is darker than the rest of the wall, so it can take a second layer. I'm not painting one little thin strip to represent the wire that goes across the wall. I'll come in later and paint that darker. I let the wall totally dry and then I come in and I start putting in the darker slats on those shutters. Again, it's not just straight black. I'm using a similar shadow color as I used on the arch part, which is a little bit of indigo with a little bit of phthalo blue in there. This is the most tedious part, but again, I kind of enjoy it. It's easy. They're fun little shapes, and as I paint them, the shutter starts to look three-dimensional, and it starts to have form. I pay careful attention to the photo while I do this. It would be easy to get sort of mechanical about it and stop paying attention to my reference photo and make these all similar. I try to pay careful attention which slats are thinner, which ones are thicker, where are there breaks. It's just more realistic and it also keeps it more interesting for me as I paint.
now I'm starting to add some details to those shutters but I'm keeping them pretty quick and I don't mind if my hands a little bit wobbly as I do this. I'm not interested in creating a hyper realistic painting as much as a painting that really captures the impression of this window. While that dries, I go back to finishing up the wood trim around the window. Burnt Sienna with just a touch of phthalo blue and I add more phthalo blue as I work up towards the top of the window where there's a little bit more shadow. Once that wood trim is dry, I can see that I need to darken it even more in the shadowy parts. Now it's time to do the same application to this shutter as I did to the other side. Now I flip it around and I start looking for where I need to add more shadow shapes. With the marble that is underneath the window, I definitely have to get a little bit darker and start adding some details. I will do the same application to the arch on top. The details have a little bit of buff titanium in them, alizarin crimson, and burnt sienna. I'm coming in with a little bit darker color to start adding shadows and texture. This is the fun part for me. I feel like the solid foundation is there and now I can just play with decorating. Now it's time to start adding some of those details and definition to the archway. Again, I'm more interested in an impression of all the architectural details rather than a tight interpretation. I have a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of transparent pyro orange on my brush. And I'm just looking for the darkest shadow shapes that I see in the sculptured molding on the archway. I will work my way around the entire arch this way. The paint is the consistency of skim milk. As I paint in some of the details, 
I really want to keep it loose. So I paint in little colors of detail and texture. And I let it settle into the paper a little bit before I come in with a damp brush loaded with darker color and obliterate the tightness of those details, softening them up so that there's just the ghost of a detail left. I do this throughout the whole arch. As I try to capture the impression of these details, I'm more concerned about the shapes of the shadows and the shapes of the light areas than I am about the actual details. The details will take care of themselves if we can capture the shapes of the shadows and the shapes of the highlighted areas. Now I'm going in and just darkening up the last few details in the iron area. The green part needs to be darkened in areas to create even more of the illusion of oxidation. So I'm coming in with the same mixture of green and applying it, but not uniformly everywhere. While that dries, I go back down on my shutters and I start painting in a very light weak tea consistency of the blue green shade that I used in other areas. And I'm just going to apply this in the areas where these shutters are darkest. As I figure out what are the final details that I want to put into these shutters, I'm really paying close attention to the photograph and going back and forth with what areas are lighter, what areas are darker. I don't want to overemphasize all the hardware and the teeny little details. It could become a little bit fussy and I really don't want to go there. Now I'm coming back up to finish this little area right above the window. I've painted the light areas and now I need to come in and do the shadow shapes. But once I got those light areas done, I realized they really needed to go a little bit darker. So I'm painting the wrought iron areas darker. This is again the same green combination. Green Appetite with a little bit of cobalt teal.
while that section dries, it's time to come in and paint the final details in the window panes. I find window reflections and reflections in glass really beautiful. And they're really quite abstract, but if you just follow what your eyes are seeing, you'll always have a successful outcome. It's important to just capture those shapes and the color and value of those shapes. It will come together, just trust that. Now while the windows dry, I'm back up here. And at this point, I'm back to painting the little shadow shapes between the wrought iron details. Again, this is really satisfying work. At first, you're not even sure what you're doing. You're just painting little shapes. But every time I step back, I can start to see it come together. It's also fun to see the sense of depth that you can start creating. Now it's time to darken up some of the details. I'm using the same dark mixture that I've been using and now it's pretty watery. I'm trying to pay attention to where it should have a hard edge and where it should have a soft edge. Some of the green also needs to be darkened. And now it's time to get the, light, the darkest shadows in on the window. Now you can start to see how those blue abstract shapes that I painted early on will make sense as they tie into all the other patterns and fun shapes caused by the ironwork.
Now that I have my darkest colors in place, it's much easier to evaluate how my values are working out. And I quickly realize that I really have to darken up some of the bluer, darker parts of the shutters. These are the same colors I've been using all along at a more watery consistency. Going over the shutters with this watery blue also helps soften some of the detail lines that I had put in earlier. The softer those lines, the more weathered the shutters will look. And now it's time to come in and put in some of the final details darkening them up, the shadow shapes up in the archway. These darker shadow shapes help to add some texture and the suggestion of the architectural elements going on. They also add depth to the archway and the marble work. I'm going in and darkening up some of the work down here also. And you can see it might look super dark right now, but I soften it with a damp brush. And as it dries, it is not too dark. It just creates more depth and detail down there. I'm just finishing up the final details on the marble on this part of the window. And now it's time to start putting in the shadow shapes. There's just a little bit of shadow underneath this ledge. And I just think it's magical how as soon as you put in that shadow, it just makes that ledge look so much more three-dimensional. Now it's time to also paint in this electrical line that crosses the bottom of the painting. I like it as a design element, and it also has a lovely shadow, which adds more depth. But I'll get to that in a little bit. Right now, I'm adding shadow shapes to the shutters. And I'm just using the same dark I was using in the wooden part with burnt sienna and a little bit of phthalo blue. But it's watered down to almost tea consistency to make those shadows. At this point, I'm really just looking for what areas might need to be darkened up just a little bit more to create more depth and more texture. As I work towards the finish, I really am just putting the final dark layers on where they go. I save these for last because until all the colors are in place, it's really hard to make an assessment of how light or dark these areas need to be. Now I'm putting in a very watery shadow underneath the electric wire. And I'm getting really close to wanting to call this done. Just adjusting values, as I make one area darker, I come to realize other areas need to get darker as well. And now I'm just doing a unifying glaze over that whole archway. My unifying glaze is just a little bit of buff titanium with just a touch of alizarin crimson. Very watery over the whole thing. 
just putting in the final touches and I'm ready to call it done. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of my Italian window. I had a lot of fun painting it.